Here we are coding fans at Twin Peaks, our last one in parameters. Um, we're going to check out what we can do here. Now there's lots of things we can do, but one thing we definitely need to notice is that the gyms randomly show up. And like in this case right here where I need 12 gyms, I only have, what, eight up there. So I need to be prepared for more gyms to pop up as my character moves throughout this. Um, and there are many ways to solve this, and I'm going to show you what I think is, is one way. Um, but we've got total gyms here. Um, and through here, our character is going to need to be able to jump. So we are going to use a character along here instead of an expert. We could put an expert here to raise our raise and lower all these platforms, but seeing as our character can jump from uh, space to space, we don't really need that. Um, but we are gonna use a lot of different ways to code here. Um, so first I need to figure out, um, well, first I need to initialize a character. Uh, so I'm gonna call my character Bob. And Bob is gonna be capital character with parentheses behind Bob. All right, now we're gonna need to figure out where Bob is going to start. So I'm gonna take a look at where my orientation is. Um, here we've got row zero down here at the bottom. So I know that down this way at the bottom is south, up this way is north, right is east, and left is west. So we need to figure out where to put Bob. I'm gonna put Bob at two zero, um, and I'm gonna have Bob facing north. So we're going to world.place. All right, we're going to place item facing direction. We're going to place Bob facing north because if we're standing here at 2-0, we need him to be facing north at 2, row 0. Perfect. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a variable to keep count of my gems. So let's go ahead and declare a variable, call it gym counter, as we have been. Um, and we're going to start it off with the value of zero. So that's a great place to start. I'm going to go ahead and run the code. All right, and Bob popped up where I wanted Bob to pop up. So this is what we've got. And then I'm going to run a function, um, or I'm going, to, I'm going to code a function. Um, if you notice, Bob will need to jump one, two, three, four, five, six times. Uh, but Bob needs to check seven squares for gems. Um, and so that's something we got to keep in, into account. So let's write the function. I'm going to call this solve row. Capital R O W, um, and I understand that uh, that this is a column, uh, but solve row seems easier because I'm gonna turn it sideways. Um, so, in my function body, I'm gonna say, okay, um, we need to jump six and check seven. So, because it's the same number each time, I'm gonna use a for loop. And we're going to do this six times, and I'll show you the little thing that we're going to do uh, to help us out. All right, But if we run it again, he could have a gem where he is standing. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put if Bob dot is on gem, we're going to have Bob dot collect the gem and increment to the gem counter. So Bob dot collect gem return and we're going to have gym counter plus, plus equals one All right, and that'll increment the gym counter okay so outside of our if statement so here's our if statement and that'll say okay if he's on gym we'll do that and he'll do this six times and then we're going to have bob dot jump so we come over here we get our jump now our issue is going to be, is he needs to jump six times, 
but he needs to check for seven. He needs to check seven spots. He he's checking the first spot, so he'll check and then jump to this one, check that one, then jump to this one, check that one, jump to this one, jump to this one, blah blah blah. And he'll check two five, and he'll jump to this, but he won't check if there's a gym there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy the if statement, just the if Bob is on gym, okay? Because we're only gonna be doing that, and I'm gonna copy that. And I need him, so for one through six, he's gonna do this. So after that, between the second brace and the last brace, outside of the for loop, but inside of the function, I'm gonna paste it there. So now we'll see that he will check the first six spaces and then jump. And then after he jumps for the sixth time onto the seventh space, he will then check to see if there's a gym there. All right, so that's, I think that's a pretty good function. Um, it gets everything done without leaving spaces away. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this function just to make sure that solve row works the way I think it does. All right, so that worked exactly the way I think it should. Um, so we've got six, we need him to do this again. So right here, Bob is gonna need to turn right, jump, and turn right. All right so we're going to bob.turn right, bob.jump, and then bob.turn right again. Okay, and then he will be standing right here on this gym and we can run solve row again. All right. And then he'll be at the end of this row. So then Bob, if he's standing here at this gym all the way at the top, facing forward, we'll need Bob to turn left, jump and turn left to get to the next place. So Bob dot turn left, Bob dot jump. Oops, too far. Jump, and then Bob dot turn left. Okay, and then he'll be standing at not four one four zero, facing towards the direction that he's facing now, and so we can go solve row again. Now our issue here is going to be, what if there are more gems? that have not popped up, like what we have right here. So you'll notice that this one right there popped up, and then this one up here popped up, and he's just gonna do this. Uh, so we need to set this up, and this is why I have the gym counter, why we, we coded the gym counter, all right? So what we're gonna need to do is get this to be repeatable. So after he solves this row, I need him to turn around. So I'm gonna just bob dot turn left, so after solve row right here, I'm gonna go bob dot turn left, turn left, or turn right, turn right, whichever one you want. Turn right, bob dot turn right. Okay, and that will get Bob to turn around, and what we can do here at the top of our code uh, is we can do a while loop and use a comparison operator. So while the gym counter is less than total gems, okay? So while there's still gems out. And then we just, uh, we just capture all this code by pulling all the way down to the bottom. So now, if more pop up at the end, uh, Bob will go and turn around and then do it again. So we'll get to see it in this one. And they keep popping up. All right, Bob will turn around. And then if we haven't captured all the gems, we can go back and get them. So we got six, which means that Bob will be able to get to the end here. All right. There we go. Um, depending on the number of gems you have, you may be able to get it on the first try without the gem counter. Um, but if you want to get it every time, like I tell 
my classes, um, I hit run several times uh, to make sure it can collect a small amount of gems and a large amount of gems and gems that randomly pop up after we pass. Um, so there are many other ways to do this one. Um, this is not the only way to do it, obviously, uh, but I think this uses a lot of our skills um, that we have gone through this point. So we'll see you on the next one, which is world building. Love you. Bye.